Anything is possible. It started with a dream. Our passion made a difference. Hello and welcome to the first of my festive Fridays and my Christmas in July series. I'm going to be bringing you a series of different Christmas projects. Got some cards, some tags, some um, festive giftware. So let's crack on down onto the table and I'm going to start with a unique cutting technique. Today I will be bringing you some gorgeous products that were in the last year's Christmas catalogue. Now these are the Christmas Gleaming stamp set and the two coordinating bauble plungers. But not only are they returning, the beautiful designer series papers with the copper foiling are all returning too. This is our cutting diagram today and we will be marking our six inch piece of designer series paper in at one and a half inches from each corner in the same place. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll bring on my Stampin' Up trimmer. We're going to be marking in at one and a half inches. So I'm placing this at the top and I will be marking this in the top here. Okay, and then I will turn the paper around. I'll mark it again at one and a half inches. Okay, and in the, in the middle of the track there. Turn again on one and a half inches. Mark it in the track. And then last side again and one and a half inches and mark it in the track, okay? So I'll then place the mark that we had here and the mark opposite diagonally, both of them need to be on the cutting track. So again, if I take my pencil and I mark the first mark was here and the bottom mark is down here, it won't show up on the camera, but trust me, I can in my light, I can, I'm nearer, I can actually see those two marks there. And I will be cutting diagonally across those two marks. Okay, then we will take one of those pieces and butt the, the cut line we've just made to the top of the trimmer. And then we will find the one and a half mark along this side. I'll just check that that's, I can just see that. I'll just Once I've got my eye on it, it's going to be just there. So here is our mark and I'm going to be shutting the trimmer and we will cut this. And we will end up with two pieces identical shapes. Okay, and then we'll do the same with the last piece. We will find the mark that we made here on the piece of designer series paper and the mark is there. It can be hard to see on patterned papers so you just do need to be very, very careful where that mark is. But here's our mark on there. So we've got the paper straight at the top. Make sure that that mark is in the track. And then we'll close that and cut that. And then we'll end up with four pieces all the same. Okay, on here like so. So we will be using one of those pieces. I'm going to get those out of the way now. So here are our note cards and envelopes. I will just score that a little bit more. You just need to score these and make sure that they are nice and flat. They come pre-scored in the pack. Um, and now what we're going to do, I am going to make a, a, this is the copper foil, very, very bright and shiny on there, I'm so sorry. Um, but we need to make a little matte layer for here. Now, what I recommend that you do is to make a template. Once we've cut that to those sizes, we need to make ourselves a matte layer that is very, very slightly larger. So all I've done here is place this on a piece of um, just scrap white card and I've actually marked all the way around the edges until I've got a template that I'm happy with. Okay, so here I've put the middle layer template. So if you were going to place that card um, on a colored card, say, and you wanted to put it on there, you know that those measurements are gonna be exactly what you want. Now, I have made, marked this front and I've marked it back because you need to remember that when you actually place this on here, you want this side to be the, the side where you're gonna actually place your, your um, foil paper on. So this, if this is the front, I'm going to turn this over and I do want to have the back on here. I need to make a piece that is that shape, which is the reverse of the paper. So I've marked a front and a back. Now this is very, very close here, but with the foil paper, we do like to try and be very economical with it. I can see that this line is, I can place that on that line there. And this line is straight along here. So if I grab my pencil again, I'm just gonna finish off that last little edge there, draw that down there and across here like so. Okay, and by, the, by having the, fr the front and the back, you should be able to see that that is gonna always be the right way round for you. 
So I will take a large pair of the scissors and I'll just take off the excess off there just to make it a little bit easier to handle. Sweep those out of the way. And there we have our layer for our card, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to introduce you to a new tool that only turned up today. And this is our stamp and seal. This is new in the annual catalog that commenced at the beginning of June, okay? We also have the seal plus, which is a really strong, stronger glue still. This replaces our snail adhesive. So if you have got the snail adhesive, this replaces our snail adhesive. Um, but it's much, much stronger and it's longer on the roll as well and it's still refillable. Okay, I'm going to remove the head on there. So this is very simple to use, very light pressure. And all we need to do is just run that along there and lift. There's no tick mark like we used to have for the old, um, uh, the fast fuse that we used to have. So we just go along those edges and just lift. Occasionally, you will need to just push it on a little bit, um, but I can see on there that there is adhesive all the way around the outside edges there. So I'm just going to line this up on here. Just leaving a small border, a nice neat border, before I finally place it down permanently. And there is our border, okay? So with those stuck together, this is the, the preferred, my preferred design for today. We'll have the short edge at the top. But before we move on, I just wanted to show you that if you didn't have the additional matte layer, just bring you back one of my other pieces. So you could have that plain like so, which is still a beautiful paper. So it doesn't have to have that copper edge around the top. Or you could turn it 180 degrees and have the top edge that way on. So you could have that area and then you've got a bigger area for a greeter or an embellishment. So it's entirely up to you which way you'd like to have it. And you could also flip it over and use the reverse side and have it that way on as a tent card. Okay, so I'll get that one out of the way and we will continue with this one with the narrow edge at the top. And just lift. And we turn and we lift. Turn and lift and turn. Just sometimes you do have to just move that one a little bit. And lift. Okay, so this is going to go in the top left hand corner here. Making sure it's parallel with the top and the side. And that is the start of our beautiful card. Okay, for the greeting on here, I have got our uh, pretty peacock ink pad and the stamp, the Merry Christmas stamp set from that same set that we've just used. And I will be stamping this in the corner. So this is a solid stamp and it will leave the negative behind. So the, the whole color will be on here and leave the greeting white in the center like so. Okay, so. so we use the large scissors again and just cut that out. Just snip that along the straight edges. You can get a guillotine if you prefer, but with straight edges and a long pair of scissors, these are quite easy just to cut straight lines. And so this is our sentiment and this is going to be attached to the card down the bottom here. I'm going to raise an embellishment up later. So I am going to use this with my Tombow glue. And just pop some Tombow along here. And there we have our greeting attached to our card. So I'll move that out of the way just for the time being. As an embellishment on my card this evening, I will be stamping this stamp here. And with my acrylic block and my stamp. 
I have some cardstock here. I'm going to be inking this up. This is our pretty peacock ink pad that coordinates beautifully with the designer series paper. And I will be stamping an image first generation and then an, an additional one second generation. Now you'll be able to see the difference in those colours. It's the same, same colour but two different shades. Next I will be using my new water painter and we're going to colour those images in. And just using the water that is in the brush, I just squeeze that onto my kitchen paper here and just make sure that the nib is wet and I will be colouring these images in. Because this is a lighter image, I'm going to start by colouring in the lighter image. Now I, I liken this technique to being one that we used to have when I was at primary school and we used to have impregnated colouring books and all you had was a pot of water and a plain paintbrush. So that is one image there and I'll clean that off and I'll just pop the lid on there for now. Then for the second option, I'm going to be using my Wink of Stella brush. Now the Wink of Stella, I use a lot of these and when they run out, never ever throw them away because you can unscrew the barrel on here. And if you just squeeze this under the tap and just get some water in there, and then there's a, the, the barrel here will still be lined with a pigment, glitter pigment ink. And if you just shake that up a little bit, just squeeze it again onto your kitchen towel just to make sure it's running through. And then we will colour the second image using the Wink of Stella. And this will give it, there will still be glitter in that water. So I'm going to just do the same. What we are doing is bleeding the water ink, the water-based ink that's already on there. I tend to go in the same direction. And I'm just going to go all the way down to the top. It's picking up the ink that's already there and just blending that very slightly to fill in those images. Okay, so it's two different ways you can do this, either with the water or you can do it with a wink of Stella. Now bring that up to the camera. You can see, hopefully you can see some sparkly on there. I can see the sparkly here, but it might not show up on the camera. So next I'm going to use one of the coordinating punches. Matches with this perfectly. You know it's all because everybody plays a part in doing what we love. Okay, making sure that's nice and straight, like so. So we've got a fainter one in the background, then we've got the, the shiny one on the front. Okay. Just for a little added detail, I'm going to use some of our crinkled seam binding ribbon in the Whisper White. And I'm just going to wrap this round the neck of the bauble on the front and tie a small bow. And ink. It's more than just a card you see. It's part of you, a part of me. It's so here's our finished card with the bow attached. So I'm just going to set that aside for the time being. I then have another sheet of the designer series paper, and we've got the envelope here. Now we don't like naked envelopes, so we're going to actually cover the flap on the back of the envelope. This has already had a bauble punched out of it, so this isn't going to be long enough. So I'm going to use it on this side here. Now, how I like to do my envelopes, I go up to the flap here and with my Tombow, because it's a wet adhesive, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room and come all the way through there. And I will place this edge on the fold of the envelope, making sure that you cover the edges here. So just this side of that fold. So it's all nice and straight across there like so. And we will press that down nicely. If I turn it over now, you will see this all nicely attached on there. So now we're just going to cut this through here and cut along here and then we'll cut round there.
And there we go. And there is our decorated envelope flap. And that comes across like so. And here we have the envelope as well, finished and just presented with that card like so. So that's card number one. I'm going to bring you a couple of other designs that I've done using the same stamp set. So here we have the card in the old olive with the holly uh, watercolored and the same greeting and the flap decorated exactly the same there. So you've got the flap there for the envelope. And then the last one I had, I have used both the images. I've used a larger one and a smaller one. And then the envelope flap was slightly different. We had a small, narrower strip of the designer series paper left over in my scraps. And to edge that, I've just put a small, very small row of the, the copper foil across the edge there just to finish it off. If you've enjoyed my tutorial today, please subscribe on the button below. And if you ring the bell as well, you will be notified of future videos as I release those. My contact details will all be at the end of the video and in the description below. Thanks again for joining me and hope to see you again soon.